Johnny Madero, Pier 23. You know, the only time San Francisco really gets hot is when a tourist calls it Frisco, and then it gets warm enough to give a sleigh dog a southern accent. Down around the waterfront, they don't care so much. And for a buck, you can insult anybody but Joe DiMaggio. The piers stretch out like a big yawn from south of the ferry building clear to the China docks. You pushed over on one side so you won't notice about the same spot you'll find dust in a bride's parlor. You find Pier 23. From there, it's a short skip to Johnny Madero's boat shop. My place. The sign outside looks honest, but down here, the only sign people pay any attention to is rigor mortis. I rent boats and do anything else you can blame on your environment. It works out all right. But pretty soon word gets around and you got a reputation. That doesn't pay to argue, because even if you're leveling, you make as much headway as a whistler with a split lip. I found that out last Wednesday afternoon. I was looking out the window watching the tide come in when somebody in back of me coughed. When I turned, Nat Finley was standing there in the office. He didn't say anything for a minute, and you noticed his eyes were as soft as the inside of a woman's arm. I had one of those faraway looks you couldn't follow with a road map. And then I saw the rest of him. He wasn't flabby, but he was on the way. And you got the idea he was an ex-fighter who settled down with a restaurant. I, uh, I got the right place, haven't I? If a woman screams you haven't, what's on your mind? <laughs> that's a good question, Madero. That's a good question. Uh, that's what I want you to find out. Look, fella, maybe I don't even want to be friendly. What's on your mind? I don't know, Madero. I don't know. All right, you convinced me. Now back out of here and we'll both be in the dark. Huh? Oh, wait a minute, Madero. Listen to me. Uh, my name is uh, Nat Finley. My wife and I live up on Knob Hill and... I've been retired for a while, see? And... I don't, but go ahead. Well, you've got to help me, Madero. I'll pay you 50 bucks a day to help me. At that price, it won't be help. I want you to find someone for me. But I don't know who or why, yet. We're back to that again, huh? Oh, listen to me. Lately, a name's been ringing in my ears. Just a name. Pete Sucho. Pete Sucho. Over and over again. So you read it somewhere. I don't know where I picked it up. For the last week, the name Pete Sucho has been on my mind. It's a, it's a nightmare. You've got to do something about it, Madero. Change your diet. That might help. I want you to find Pete Sutro. Find out who he is, where he is, why he's bothering me. If you do, I'll, I'll give you a $200 bonus. Look, Finley, is this a job or a career? There must be a dozen Sutros from here to Jersey City. Maybe, but the Pete Sutro I want lives right here in this town. He's got to. There's a law? Now listen to me, man. Oh, last night, I, I kept hearing the name Sutro again. Only this time, there was an address, too. It was care of General Delivery, San Francisco. So he's got to be somewhere in this town. Why don't you check the phone book? I have, and the city directory, too. But so far, I haven't been able to locate him. And I will, huh? Well, if you don't, you're still getting 50 bucks a day. What are you worried about? That 50 bucks a day? It might turn out to be a dream, too. You better throw in some advance money. Well, sure, Mattel. I brought a check along, just in case. Will $100 cover your doubts? Yeah, if the bank can cover your check. If they can't, you don't have to do the job. That's fair enough? Mm-hmm. Will you, will you start looking right away? Yeah. But you've got to be careful, Madero. My wife's never to know about this, understand? Why? Because, well, she... Uh, she doesn't like the idea. She she thinks I'm a little crazy looking for a name like this. She hates me, I think. She thinks I'm crazy. Don't worry about her, Finley, until she starts mixing your nightcaps. For 50 bucks a day, I'll chase anybody's dream. Because with that kind of dough, you're rich enough to run down a couple of your own. When Finley left, I called the bank and found out his check had solid backing. So I went down to Lofty's and I put out some feelers on Pete Sutro. It didn't take long before one of the boys came up with a lead. A couple of other people were looking for Sutro, too. One was a guy named Marty Kane. The other was a torch singer named Evelyn Day. The word was that Sutro and Evelyn used to trade mash notes in Detroit. Well, I phoned the Jade Club where Evelyn was working, but she wasn't due for an hour. So I decided to give Marty Kane the first try. He was living in a motel out in the marina, so I went out. There was a sign outside that said Modern Cabins, but you knew Abe Lincoln did better in Illinois. The cabins were the size of an upper berth with enough holes to start a punch board. That didn't leave much privacy. You had more chance of keeping a secret from Matta Harry. I asked the manager where Kane's place was, and he pointed to the end cabin. I went over and knocked on the door. Kane opened it and glared. His eyes were the color of Saturday night on a week old jag, and he was so chunky you figured he'd be harder to move than an ice box through a basement window. Who are you? My name's Madero, Johnny Madero. Don't rhyme with anything. What are you looking for? A guy named Pete Sutro. I hear you got the same idea. So you got ears. I'll invite you in. Oh, I can't turn you down. Yeah, that's what everybody says about this gun. Now sit down, you get me nervous. Put away the gun and we'll both be calm, huh? After you tell me what you know about Sutro. I'm tracking down a dream. Yours? A client's. 
You sound anxious. What's your pitch? A wild one. Just say he owes me some dough and I need it bad now. You got the muscles? Take in laundry. I'll put you through the ringer first. I want to lead on Sutro. Yeah, we both do, but I'm not going down on my knees. Oh. Get up, Mazzaro. I don't want to make a liar out of you again. You're tough, Kane. I'll bet you got your dander scared stiff. Yeah, and I'll start on yours now. What Sutro to you? Fifty bucks a day. A guy named Nat Finley hired me to track him down. Does that make you happy? No, just ambitious. Who's Nat Finley? He came in and paid me to find Sutro. He said the name was giving him nightmares. Sounds like a bedtime story, Madero. Well, if you don't like it, jazz it up. It's the truth. I read the wrong papers. Give me another version. All right, if you don't believe me, Kane, make up your own. Here's Finley's check. Can you read? If you'll help me with the big words. Give it here. Nat Finley. Yeah, Nat Finley. You weren't lying. Looks like a good check. I'll take a chance. I'll cash it for you. It's giving you IDs, huh? Yeah, and the first one's about you. Well, here's your dough, Madeira. Now, get out. Get out quick. Oh, you're too good to me, Kane. Suppose the check bounces. It won't, Madeira, because I ain't going to cash it. Oh, I couldn't figure it. Kane looked at the check and smiled like a guy who just learned all about the atom bomb. I walked out, and the only thing I knew for sure was the demand for Pete Sutra was big enough to start a business boom. I headed back to my apartment to see how much lip I could bring down with an ice bag and a little pressure. When I got there, the door was open and the light was on. Inside, things looked even brighter. The brunette was draped over the couch like she paid the first installment on it. She was about 25, with a pair of legs that would have made a silkworm turn over and write a fan letter. She wore a tan business suit, and the way it was rumpled up, you knew office hours were over. When she saw me, she began to vibrate like an alarm clock at six in the morning. Good evening. I won't argue, but you got the wrong room. Will I regret it? I don't know you that well. Oh, you'll catch up with the crowd. My name is Sheila. I'm Nat Finley's wife. You should be somebody's wife. It cuts down on the risk. I want to talk to you. Go ahead. I'll try not to stare. Let's have a drink first, Mr. Madero. Maybe it will cloud your vision. Yeah, and the issue too, huh? Hmm. You serve strong stuff, Mr. Madero. Soda? I'm all charged up now, lady. What's on your mind? I have a problem. Maybe you can help me. Maybe it's too late. I'm listening. It's about my husband, Ned. He tries, but he can't hide much from me. I'll bet you have the same trouble. Look, lady, you're working too hard for a sale. If you've got a point, make it. All right, Mr. Madero, we'll skip the intermission. My husband saw you tonight and sold you a wild story. Yeah, but it paid off. So far, I'm not complaining. But I am. I want you to drop the whole silly job Nat gave you. You're not building a case. Fifty bucks a day buys a lot of hangover, lady. You don't understand, Mr. Madero. My husband is a sick man. Yeah, I know. He can't sleep at night. He has a large imagination, and it's been getting worse lately. He, um, dreams up things. Sometimes I think... Sometimes I think he's a little crazy. Maybe it's a hobby. He can afford it. There are some things even he can't afford. Yeah, like finding Pete Sutro. That's right, Mr. Madero. There is no such man. Hmm. A guy named Marty Kane will give you odds. Who did you say? Marty Kane. He cashed in your husband's check. Do you know him? No. No, I never heard of him. You don't sound so sure. Marty was talking about Sutro. All right, Mr. Madero. I'm talking about something else now. Money. So far, you're whispering. Shouting, Mr. Madero. Five hundred bucks worth. I'll give you five hundred dollars to drop the job and forget everything. Mm. All right, baby. You twisted my arm. You, um... You won't let me down, Mr. Madero. Will you? If I do, it'll be nice and easy. Finley had the kind of a wife you mate with a panther. She picked up her purse and peeled off 500 fish. She wasn't talking anymore, and when she swayed out, she wondered how much night practice she'd given that rumba. Well, I was all washed up with the Finleys. It felt good already. So did the dough. I felt like a guy whose name was just picked in a chain letter. My mind was free for the better things in life. So I called up a girl out on Van Ness and told her to meet me at the Regent Bowling Alley. I got there before she did, so I started warming up the alley. A few minutes later, it got a lot warmer because Inspector Warcheck of San Francisco Homicide began spoiling my game. Hello, Madero. It was a nice strike. You're in the wrong kind of alley, Warcheck. What do you want? Some pointers. You got time? No. I can see how you hold a bowling ball. Now show me how you hold a gun, huh? All right, Warcheck. What's on your mind? I was on Marty Kane's. A guy named Pete Sutro. He owed Kane some money. And you paid off? I paid him a visit. We had something in common. And you must have bored him to death. Kane couldn't quite stand a couple of slugs in his forehead, so he quit. Well, what do you want me to do, Warcheck? Break the news to his wife? No. 
Just tell me about the argument you had. It was a monologue. Kane wanted to know where Sutra was hiding. I only knew one answer, so he did all the talking. Oh, you should have said please. It's not polite to interrupt a guy with a gun. Look, Warchick, what makes me the blue plate special? The motel manager. He said you go into Kane's room, and then he heard a struggle, and then later on he heard a shot. Did he hear who won the fourth? Listen, copper, a guy named Nat Finley hired me to find out who Pete Sutro was. The name was playing tag in his brain all week, and he wanted to know why. Yeah, does that sound like a story? Check with Finley. He's the guy who made it up. What if he lets you down? And work on his wife. She's not bad looking, and she paid me to drop Finley's account. I'll check both your alibis, Manero. In the meantime, I want to line you up. While you're making the rounds, look up a gal named Evelyn Day. She knew Sutro, too. Go ahead. Run the police force. Tell me what to ask her. Forget it, Warchick. You're not the type. <laughs> Warchick stood there for a second, wiping his teeth with his tongue. If he'd done it on the outside, it would have been a contract job. And then one of the bowlers in a tight pair of slacks brushed up against him and went out. He looked at me once more and headed after her. Well, I didn't feel much like bowling either, so I left a note at the desk for the girlfriend and started out. I know I was in trouble. Some days it's harder to duck trouble than a handful of pebbles. Oh, I told myself I didn't kill Kane, but that was like trying to fight a fire with an anti-smoke law. The big question was Pete Sutro. Who was he? There were other questions. Like, why did the Finley dame buy me off? And why did her husband want Sutro in the first place? Well, there were no answers, and I felt about as safe as an alligator walking through a handbag factory, so I looked up the only good guy I know, a waterfront priest named Father Leahy. I found him in his room, flipping through a couple of raffle books. Hello, Johnny. You're just in time to buy a ticket. The boys' club is raffling off an electric toaster. I'm already a little burned, Father. I'm in a spot, Johnny. The boys gave me a quota to fill, and I got stuck at a banker's luncheon all afternoon. You know what they're like on risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to sell some tickets. All right, I'll buy a couple, but I need your help. I'm in trouble. You'd better buy five. At a time like this, both of us can afford to be generous. What kind of trouble? This won't take long, Father. You always say that, but it adds up. You don't realize it, but I lose whole weekends that way. Will you please listen, Father? Warchick wants to pin me down on a murder. You've got the weight. Who's dead? A guy named Marty Kane. I saw him a couple of hours ago, and he was still alive when I left. Can you prove it? Well, that's going to be tough. The clerk at the motel saw me go into Kane's room just before he got tumbled. So far, you don't have a way out. Why not plead insanity? I would, but I'm afraid of the competition. What do you mean? A muddled-up guy named Nat Finley hired me to chase down the name Pete Sutro. He claimed the name was haunting him. I know how he feels. Johnny, I don't think the bishop likes me either. My only lead was Marty Kane. He seemed to want Sutro worse than I did. Sutro is certainly popular for a dream. Do you think he'll ever materialize? I don't know, but I don't think Marty Kane was killed over a dream. If he was, it must have been quite a nightmare. Did you look up your client again? I didn't have the time. His wife paid me to drop the whole job. She said Finley was a harmless duck with a pail full of wild ideas. Does the husband feel the same way about his wife? Do you want gossip, Father, or do you want to help me? That's an unfair question, Johnny. Either way, I'm embarrassed. Please, Father. Will you check up on a few people for me? Yes, yes. Look up Keen's friends, and if you run out of those, try his enemies. Find out who might have had an urge to kill him, will you? It's a tall order, Johnny. There may be a lot of people involved. I can use them all, Father. I know. But can they all use an electric toaster? When I left Father Leahy, I knew I still had one base to tag. It was Sutro's ex-flame, a doll named Evelyn Day. I drove down to Eddy Street and I parked near the Jade Club. Well, it's not a bad place, but on a slow night, even the winos are afraid to go in. Inside, it was dark enough to hide the decimal point on a check, and over by the bar, there was a piano playing music that nobody was listening to. And then Evelyn came out. And right off, he started hunting for the nearest fire exit. She had red hair about this side of 98 degrees, and she wore a black evening gown that held up by one strap and a prayer. She was the kind of a girl who could wear a Mother Hubbard and make it look like a negligee. And when she sang, it came out low enough to strike oil. After she was through, I asked the bartender to give her a message. She walked over to me, and she wasn't happy one way or the other. Are you the man who wanted me? One of them. You're Evelyn, huh? Yeah. What'll it lead to? A crisis if you don't sit down. All right. You've got me interested. Now, what's on your mind that we can talk about? My name's Madero. Now, let's start with a friend named Pete Sutro. Let's continue. What do you want to know about him? Where is he? Are you a cop, or will you pay for the right answer? I need too many of them, baby. I'm way out ahead in a murder derby, and I'll pitch homicide anybody I can get. What do you want Sutro for? 
I think he shot Marty Kane. Someone should have. But you're betting on the wrong horse. Your prejudice, Sutra was your boyfriend. That's right. He was my boyfriend. But I haven't seen him lately. All right, then. What was the last thing you did with him? <laughs> I'll read my diary to you someday. Now, look, baby, you've got a choice. I'm going to rough you up or let the pros do it. Let go of my arm, Adero. Or I'll call a bouncer. Call Sutro. Now, start talking before I bruise you up good. Slow down, Madero. You're out of my weight class. Yeah. I'll tell you what you want to know. Should I take notes, or is this going to be quick? I don't know. Depends on how sentimental I get. That's all right. I got a handkerchief. Okay, I'll tell you. I used to be Pete Sutro's girl in Detroit. Then one day he skipped out and left me hanging on the vine. Don't worry, baby. You haven't with it yet. I started looking for him, and so did Kane. Why Kane? He and Pete had a deal together. Pete ran out with all the dough. Your boy should have run for Congress. He's got a nice record. What kind of a deal did he have with Kane? I don't remember. All of a sudden, huh? I'm shy when it comes to strangers. Let's just end it by saying Pete disappeared. Let's say you're dummying up. I love Pete. And I wouldn't want anything to happen to him. Do you carry a picture with that torch, baby? Sure. Want to see? Here's a snapshot of Pete in my locket. Do you know him? Not this season, no. I want him back. He was a good guy. Yeah, your boy worked up a lot of people. He made number one nightmare for a guy named Nat Finley. I heard. And I want to see Finley, too. You saw me, miss. But I want to talk to Madero. Hello, Finley. I got to see you alone, Madero. And I got to see you now. You lost your option. I'm freelancing again. Well, you can't walk out on me. This is going to hurt, fella. Your wife paid me to drop the job. That's what I got to talk to you about, Madero. I think she wants to drop me, too. Finley grabbed me by the arm, and you could tell he was scared. His jaw was shut tighter than a wall safe, and his Adam's apple rode up and down like a yo-yo. Evelyn wanted to compare notes with him on Sutro, but right now Finley was as friendly as a no-limit poker game. He hustled me out of the jade and into a waiting cab. He wouldn't say anything because of the driver. So he sat in one corner, rubbing his hands and looking straight ahead. When we got to the office, Finley paid the bill, and we went up the ramp. Inside, he had a little trouble getting started, like a big family leaving on a picnic. And then he got his voice. I'm in a bad spot, Madero. I need help. Have you tried classified? I'm trying you. I tell you, my wife's out to get me. She keeps telling me I'm crazy. She's trying to talk me into it. A lot of wives feel that way, Finley. She'll get over it. Yeah? Well, well I, Madero, she's trying to send me to an asylum. She and Sutro. You got enough worries to start a peace conference. What brings Sutro back into the headlines? I, uh, I found a letter in Sheila's purse. Kane wanted $10,000 from Sheila to keep quiet about Sutro. All right, quit crowding me with ghosts. So your wife had a past. And she and Sutro have a future unless... Unless you help me, help me, I tell you. I tell you, Sutro is behind the whole thing. He and my wife must know each other, and they're trying to get rid of me. You're getting a complex, Finley. Slow down. Well, you've got to help me. Well, who's going to help me? i got a murder rap to beat. Well, but I'll clear you, Madero. I'll clear you if you help me now. You couldn't clear your own throat in an empty tunnel. What makes you eight feet tall? This gun in my hand. Well, stop pointing it, fella. You're too nervous to aim. Well, you don't understand, Madero. I'm not pointing it at you. I'm giving it to you. This is the gun that killed Kane. You were there when it happened? No, but either my wife or Sutro was. When did you dream that up? An hour ago. I found it in my wife's closet. Two slugs are missing, and I, I got a feeling it killed Kane. Send it to homicide. They'll let you know who did it by return mail. I can't, Madero. I can't just yet. I don't know whether Sheila or Sutro did it. I got a feeling inside. You've got to find Sutro, or you'll end up killing me yet. That's a prediction? Wait a minute. Someone's coming down the hall. Hide the gun, Madero. They're after me now. Yeah. They got the light fuse. Lay low. They're aiming for something bigger. What are you going to do, Madero? Just waiting for something to happen. Madero. Madero. I guess it happened. Somebody turned a flashlight in my eyes and then hit a four-bagger. If they hung around, they could have seen me do a couple of quick quivers a chorus girl would have been proud of. I laid there in the dark for a while. If you're going to look messy, a blackout isn't a bad place to do it. After a while, I tried to get up, but my stomach felt as empty as a horse laugh at a funeral. I sprawled out again, and I tried to figure how a name like Pete Sutro could start so much pain. Then the lights went on. They should have stayed off, because Warcheck was breathing over me like a steam engine with a broken heart. Hello, Madero. Does the light bother your eyes? Yeah, Warcheck. Get out of it. And get used to it. It's a lot stronger down at headquarters. Uh, tell me about the gun on the floor. I heard you were coming. I wanted to commit suicide. You didn't try hard enough. Just got a phone tip that said you had the gun to kill Marty Kane. Hand it to me. All right, copper, I'll make it easy for you. Finley left the gun here before somebody sapped me. Uh-huh. 
Who's somebody? Don't any of your friends have names? Sure. Check with Finley. He was here when it happened. It was dark, Madero. How did he see? With an electric eye? I don't know. Maybe he smelled his wife's perfume. Look her up, too. She's that interesting, huh? Kane used to think so. What do you mean? It was blackmailing her. Look, Madero, a grocery list is blackmail to you. I'll put you on the inside. Finley found a letter in her purse. Kane wanted ten grand to keep quiet about Sutro. Finley told you all about it, huh? He can't keep a family secret. And the wife tumbled Kane to keep him quiet. Is that the idea? Well, this is your good day, Warcheck. Find Sutro now, and you've licked the whole thing. No, you find him, Madero, and we'll give you a reward. You're too generous. What's the pitch? Sutro's wanted for a payroll robbery in Detroit. He's been out of sight for a year now. He hasn't been out of mind, though. Finley thinks his wife is carrying on a sideline with him. Look, Madero, I talked to your boy, Finley. He's got enough dreams to start a mattress factory. I don't believe him, I don't believe you. You don't believe the world is round. Take stock, Warchick, and start learning. Yeah, I will, I will. Let's see how much the fingerprints on this gun teach me. You've got a story? I'll stay after school. You'll still wear the dunce cap. That's all right, Madero. There'll be a badge on it. Warchek wrapped the gun up in a handkerchief. And if it killed Marty Kane, I might as well start writing letters to the governor. The gun was a plant, but I had about as much chance of selling that to Warchek as a pair of short pants to a reform school. Warchek stood there and smiled, and then he walked out. Ah, oh, there were a lot of questions again. Like who sapped him? And did Finley really have a story? The more I thought about it, the more snarled it got. And then the phone rang. Yeah. Hello, Johnny. This is Father Leahy. Are you still free? Yeah, but I'm breathing hard. How'd you make out? Fine, Johnny. I sold ten raffle tickets. What'd you find out? Warcheck just got a teletype. Sutro pulled a payroll robbery in Detroit. They think Marty Kane helped him. Well, that figures. What else? Sutro and the Doe are supposed to be somewhere in town. Yeah, even the bloodhounds are worried. How does Sheila figure? She and a girl named Evelyn were both in love with Sutro. But rumor has it that Sutro's favorite was Evelyn. What about Finley? Sheila must have got tired of sharecropping, so she settled for Finley. They both came in from Detroit about a year ago. But, Father, it's still fuzzy. Marty Kane was blackmailing Sheila because of Sutra. There must be a tie. Evelyn's asking the same question, and she thinks Sheila knows the answers. She's on her way to the Finley place for a showdown. Thanks, Father. I'll tag along and grab a seat on the sideline. It'll be a free-for-all if those two girls tangle. Don't worry, Father. They won't get in my hair. Don't be too sure. Samson had trouble with one girl. <laughs> Father Leahy hung up, all the pieces began to fall into place. All but one. Where was Sutro? He was around somewhere, but it was like throwing a headlock on a shadow. I grabbed a cab out to the Stanford Arms, and when I got there, the doorman looked at me as if I'd just blown up an orphan. I took the elevator and got off on the sixth floor. And then I leaned on the doorbell, and Sheila answered. She was wearing a pair of rose-colored lounging pajamas, and I've seen baked potatoes with lucid jackets. She must have been surprised, but she didn't blink an eyelash. Are you pausing or opposing, Mr. Madero? I'm looking for trap doors. Oh, I thought you are going to look that way. Come inside. Yeah. Now bring that gleam in your eye over to the fireplace. We'll warm it up a little. It won't look good in company. Why? Who's company? Evelyn's a little late. She got tied up sharpening her claws. Evelyn who? Hold out, baby. She's got a better question than that. Like what? Like where's Pete Sutro? The key sounds like a friend. That's too early. That's probably my husband, Matt. Oh, hello, Madero. I'm glad you're here. Somebody's been following me. Oh, you're dreaming again, darling. You see? What did I tell you? It wasn't a dream. That must be her. Hello, Sheila. Remember me? You... You must have the wrong place, lady. That's the right idea. I want Pete Sutro back. You want too much. I'll grab anyway. I've come for Pete, Sheila. You came too late. He's dead. Pete Sutro died two years ago in Detroit. You hear me? He's dead. Not dead enough. You're lying, Sheila. Pete Sutro is standing right behind you. What do you mean? That's my husband. That's Matt. So you gave him another name and another face. But you can't give him another voice. That's Pete Sutro. What are you talking about? What are you saying? I'm not Pete Sutro. Don't you remember me, Pete? I'm Evelyn. Oh, what did they do to your face, darling? My face? I I was in an accident. It's, it's hard to remember things. Remember the payroll robbery, Pete? You were supposed to come back to me. Payroll robbery? Yeah, it was an accident. And I, I was hurt. I, I can't remember anything else. It, 
It's so hard to think. Well, you were there, Sheila. What happened? Go ahead, Sheila. Tell him what happened. Tell him that he's Pete Sutro. Tell him that you stole him from me. Tell him that you killed Marty Kane. All right, Evelyn. I'll tell it to you first. It was a good campaign, but I'm voting you down Put away now. the gun. He won't stand for he's it. He's pick now. What are you doing, Sheila? You'll hurt him. I'll try. <laughs> you... You shot him. You shot... Evelyn. Please. You remember me. She... She broke us up. For good. But you... You re- remember me. Yeah. Yeah. I remembered. Evelyn. I'm beginning to remember a lot of things now. Then forget them, Ned. Just you and me now. We're married. You are. You married a guy named Nat Finley. Stay away from me, Nat. Nat. Try Pete. See how it sounds. Let... Give me that gun, baby. Let go. You killed Evelyn. Let go. You didn't need her. Not anymore. I got the gun now. No, please, Nat. Please. Tell me it's a dream, baby. Tell me I'm crazy. You are, Nat. You are. I am getting out of here. You're not quick enough. The gun's empty now. Yeah. So is everything. I'm tired, Mateo. Tired. Hold out. It's going to be a long trip. Yeah. I told you, Mateo. Pete Sutro was going to kill me in the end. Yeah. You talked yourself into it. Warchak got the whole story the next morning. It seems that Sutro and Kane were in a big robbery in Detroit. The plan was for Sutro to carry all the dough and meet Kane and Evelyn at their hideout. But Sutro got smashed up in an auto accident and never made it. Sutro's face had to be remodeled, and when he lost his memory, Sheila made her pitch. She promoted a wedding and cut herself in on half the stolen cash. Changed his name to Nat Finley and brought him out to San Francisco. Kane and Evelyn got wind that Sutro had taken off to the coast, so they followed they couldn't find him, and for a year, Sheila and Sutro got along without a hitch. And then Sutro began hearing his real name in his own mind, and before Sheila could do anything, I'd already shown her husband's check to Kane. He recognized Sutro's handwriting right away, and so he started to blackmail Sheila. He didn't make any yardage because Sheila stopped him with a thirty-eight, And then she tried to convince her husband that he was crazy. Evelyn won in the last round when she recognized Sutro's voice at the jade. It turned out that Sutro had been chasing himself until he caught himself. Well, Warchak asked only one question. How can a guy forget his own name? I don't know. A lot of hotels would like to know that, too. Johnny Madero, Pier 23, starring Jack Webb as Johnny Madero, has been presented by the Mutual Network. Johnny Madero is written by Herb Margulis and Lou Morheim. Gail Gordon played Father Leahy. Bill Conrad played Inspector Warcheck of Homicide. John Garfield pla- played Nat Pinley. Others in the cast were Gene Rogers, Joan Banks. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and the entire production was directed by Nat Wolf. Tony Lafrano. This speaking. is the Mutual Broadcasting System.